This is the 22nd year that the Chelmsford Historic Society has awarded the Guardian Award. It was my great honor to have nominated Fred for this award, and I think you'll all agree he is most deserving of it. So anyway, 30 years goes by, I did nothing for the town. Meanwhile, Carol signed up for several school-related groups. She uh, served a term on the school committee. She was on the cultural council for the town, and uh, the town meeting rep for 10 years, and, uh, and then she was uh, a... Uh, dedicated officer here in the Historical Society while I was doing squat. So, here, uh, this is John Alden, and he and I are just shooting the breeze uh, under the tent, which Carol was responsible for on the 4th of July. And uh, uh, that's, John Alden, by the way, is a direct descendant of the uh, Cooper who came across in the Mayflower. Uh, he passed away a few years back. And anyway, his wife and my wife are both on the board here. John asked me to go to a meeting to uh, something called the Historical Commission, which I maybe heard of, but I had really no idea what it was. So, uh, and I didn't realize it, but this little conversation was going to make a big change in my extracurricular activities. So, uh, I went to the meeting, he showed me these file cabinets filled with historical information. And uh, most of it was, uh, forms that are filled out, um, many of them by Jane Drury, not all, there were some other volunteers, but Jane was the gold standard in town history. And uh, this is just one uh, news clipping that went along with the inventory on 40 Mile Road, and this of course is the building that we're in right now. And uh, uh, this is a 1969 article when the, the house was donated to the society. And there was a witch that actually lived here, and Jane researched and found out it really wasn't this house. It was this site, but there was a previous house in the 1690s when poor Martha Sparks got accused unjustly of being a witch. She spent over a year in Boston. Her parents went down and paid a bribe and, and got her back into town. Here. So anyway, there's just all this fascinating information in all these file cabinets. So what do they want me to do? Well, can we build a website? Wasn't on my bucket list. I, I had never done it, didn't, had no idea how to do it. But dug on it, these, these files were too interesting. So this really grabbed my attention. So I started taking boxes of, of files home and scanning them. And in the meantime, started uh, going online and then learning how to code HTML the hard way, you know, right from scratch. And, uh, and got these, these online. And then, um, uh, Jane had ALS when I first met her. She unfortunately passed away. The files went to Linda Prescott, um, who's here tonight. Won another previous Guardian Award winner, as was Jane. So one of the things that bothered me about these files as I was putting them online was the pictures were like third generation Xerox copies of photos, and or black and white or newsprint, similar to this one here. So. So I went out and I took pictures of all the uh, houses, the uh, businesses, the monuments, everything that was in the inventory. And uh, uh, why I put this particular one, uh, years later in 2007, I was working in Japan and I got an email from CNN Money. And they wanted permission to use this photo because that year Chelmsford got um, nominated as the 21st most livable city in the country. So this is the photo that they used to represent Chelmsford. That's 200 Acton Road, by the way. Now in uh, 2004, I've been scanning uh, the, the uh, Historical Commission um, suddenly had an opening because Tory Gallion left for medical reasons of uh, Gallion uh, Lime Quarry Reservation. She and her husband Bruce, it's named after them. But anyway, Tory had to resign, so there was an opening. So I put in an application, got approved, and uh, now I'm uh, a, a commission member. Um, unbeknownst to me, uh, the chairman, uh, who's here tonight, I don't want to embarrass her too much, but she went to town meeting 
to get a demolition delay bylaw approved, which is recommended by the state. The State Historical Commission strongly recommends every town to have this. So she got the full treatment at town meeting. Okay, I wasn't there, I didn't see it. This all happened before my time. And she got trounced. So uh, she came uh, back to the commission and said, I'm never going back to speak to town meeting again. <laughs> and she hasn't. Yeah, she's not a, she, she hasn't gone back. So, so meanwhile, I show up on the committee they said, let's give this one to the new guy. Let's throw him into the snake pit and see what he can do. So, uh, so I put together a PowerPoint presentation. This is actually the, uh, the first sheet of the presentation right here. And the three big objections that the town meeting members threw at Linda we addressed right here on the front page. And uh, then there were all supporting uh, charts and graphs. I took the presentation to Bernie Lynch, who was our town manager at the time, and uh, he reviewed it, we went over it, we find it, and uh, he offered to pitch it. So anyway, in spring 2005, we took the, uh, the bylaw uh, to town meeting, and by the time Bernie got through with that crowd, it was a no-brainer to vote yes. So we get it through. This house right here at 33 North Road, the uh, reason I put that picture up, um, I had a phone call several years later from a lady working for an architectural company for uh, St. Mary's Church. And uh, she wondered if it'd be okay to demolish the building. <laughs> so I told her about the demolition delay bylaw and how, because this is already on the state inventory. Uh, it would be a one-year delay, and uh, if she wanted to uh, build a brick box on the site, tear down and build a brick box, she was going to run into a lot of opposition uh, at the public hearing. So uh, then, uh, I just recently found this uh, architectural rend rendering that you see up here, and uh, there's the brick box that I had guessed they were going to build. But uh, you can see now, the house is saved, and they built a, uh, a wood uh, parish center behind the building. So uh, I can't take credit for saving this historic home, but every time I drive by, I do feel a, a strong <laughs> personal connection. <to> <laughs> Now in 2008, um, I have to disagree with Bernie. I'm not sure that Jane uh, discovered, if she did discover the, uh, the town history, she never said a word. She kept Eleanor's secret, okay? Then uh, Linda Prescott inherited the files. She kept the secret, I think. Anyway, I, I had the task, um, as one of the newer guys, to order some nice used file cabinets and uh, we were moving from Old Town Hall to town offices as sorting through boxes of stuff and, and you've all heard the story how I found the folder with a ribbon wrapped around it it had a table of contents, uh, introduction and conclusion. So I was actually the one that discovered it. I said, oh my god, this is the rumored history. So um, this is what we were looking at right here. This is a uh, Hand, hand scratched uh, spreadsheet. Okay, this is before Excel, and uh, this is before Word. Okay, it's hand typed and well hand annotated. So this is what we had to work with. And she hadn't finished the last chapter, and it only went up into the 1970s. So it was sort of indeterminate how, how far it went. But uh, uh, now we're at the meeting, and we're trying to decide what to do with the manuscript. So it was voted uh, to publish. And I'm sitting there, wait a minute. This wasn't on my bucket list. <laughs> so I said, well, if we can do a website, maybe I can publish a book too. So, so um, uh, I won't go into uh, too much uh, detail because you've all heard the story about how I got together a team of uh, transcribers and then a team of proofreaders. Uh, one of them was Kevin Zimmerman. He clued me in on the AP rules, so I went and integrated those into the book. And then, uh, I really, really wanted Judy Buswick, who's a professional writer, to uh, review this. And uh, she protested, so I patiently persisted. And after several months, I got her to edit the book. 
she ended up editing the whole book. So we went, at that point, uh, we went from amateur to professional status. And I hired a professional book designer, and uh, we had, uh, of course, uh, Carrier Corporation was the same company that did Water's book. 2009. There's a problem. Uh, the Center Town Hall was vacated by Innovation Academy, and North Town Hall was literally dead storage. No water, no electricity, no heat, nothing. Just a whole lot of sports equipment. In the daytime, you could go in and uh, be in a flight from the windows and the uh, baseball teams. They had just racks of uh, tons of equipment. That's all it was used for. So uh, David Hennison, being a good uh, citizen, said, well, since these buildings are vacant, uh, I have a proposal. Why don't we make these low-cost housing for veterans? So he put the proposal together, put it out there, and the people rose up. Okay, now, I, want, I want you to look, these signs say, save our town hall, they're all chanting, but look at this guy right here. This is Bernie Reddy, literally beating the drum to, in protest, okay, out in front of town hall. So um, the town manager got together a study committee and uh, I, I put in, I applied as a historical uh, representative, give a little historical perspective. It got accepted on the Town Hall's Utilization Committee. So we had some public hearings, and two citizen groups came forward. Uh, one with a proposal to the Chelmsford Center of the Arts. Of course, everybody knows Sue Gates. The other one was uh, Laura Lee and her crew from North Chelmsford that proposed the Chelmsford Community Center. So we uh, pitched it at the group to the selectmen. It was accepted. Uh, now the next step is to get uh, funding, uh, architectural study funding, a uh, multi-million dollar uh, bond to uh, uh, reconstruct these two buildings. But meanwhile, uh, while the money's getting ready, what are we going to do with Town Hall? Okay, let's do a pilot program. So we had Sue Gates put together a pilot program in the original building. And this is the dedication of the pilot program. You see Paul Cohen, there's Sue Gates right there, and some of our town reps and selectmen here. So uh, this, and, and there's Bernie Reddy right there. And he's got a big smile on because now his town hall is being saved. And uh, this fellow right here, this young man who's kind of looking at me, uh, was also on the utilization committee, Matt Hansen. We like to think that we launched Matt on a sterling career because now he is the town administrator in Tingsboro. We like to think he got his start right here with the town hall's yeah. utilization. Yeah. Um, he was about 18 at that time. Yes, I think he was. He was still in college. Yeah. So uh, anyway, here's uh, Sue Gates as, as the, uh, uh, the, the auditorium upstairs is under construction. She liked my picture here. So this, this became her, uh, her Facebook picture for quite a long time. And uh, here's the building after reconstruction was finished and the lawn was new and growing. And this is North Town Hall, which was in really sad shape. Uh, it had the, the doghouse opening to the basement on the side and uh, the school department had abandoned it in, uh, uh, in 19, around 1986, I think. And they had all sorts of openings cut in the walls for uh, heaters and air conditioners and stuff. And uh, it was in sad shape. So here is the, the, the dedication of the, uh, the Chelmsford Community Center. And uh, I want to thank uh, Jerry Sullivan, who's our treasurer, right here. He, uh, I couldn't make it that day, so he went and he captured the moment uh, of the ribbon cutting. And this is Laura Lee right here. And these are some of her North Chelmsford team that uh, put together the successful proposal. And there's one fellow who, uh, for many years, tried to find a solution as to what to do with the North Town Hall. And he's been called, uh, one time, the mayor of North Chelmsford. This fellow right here, George Merrill. And George happens to be sitting right back here. So, 2012, uh, now that I've got
got my uh, uh, author's chops, or whatever you want to call it, uh, when Arcadia was looking for somebody to do a follow-up on the Chelmsford book, I said, okay, I'll do it. And uh, I have a lot of great pictures here at the Society, and a few other sources, and uh, there was a difference in, with this book. Uh, in, the, in the previous book, when Judy Buswick edited, she used the Chicago Manual of Style, which is the book, the Bible, that all the authors use. Well, Arcadia has one more level of editing, and uh, so after I did all the, the photo, uh, uh, produced all the high resolution photos all to their requirements, and did all the text, the right number of words, and everything to their requirements, they actually go through and they check to make sure that what you're saying makes sense with respect to the pictures, and uh, if you make a claim or something that seems a little rash, okay, the editor comes back. So that was another layer that I wasn't expecting, but I really have a lot of respect for the editors because they took some of my baloney and they turned it into great write-ups. So uh, uh, this is, again, this is a professional grade book and uh, I have a lot of respect for, for the Arcadia people. Okay, in 2015, uh, I had done a couple of uh, town uh, annual report covers for, for Trish, or, uh, who was our assistant uh, to the town manager. And uh, in 2014 or 2015, she asked me if I'd do a cover for the 2015 annual report. So I went out, now because the fire station was new, and we had two new fire trucks, and we had also done a new girls softball field, and we had also refurbished the town, town office. I went up, this is uh, Andy Miku, firefighter Andy Miku. Uh, he took me up on the ladder, the ladder uh, in front of the fire station. Okay, so I'm up there with the town's camera that they bought for the Historical Commission, and uh, up, up, high up above, I get the, the town offices, I get the girls' softball field, I get the fire station, I get the engine house, and I get the two fire trucks. So I turned this into Trish, and I was really happy. I, I, I said, this is it. This is a cover for your... She just knocked the wind right out of my sails and said, well, there are some other entries, and the publisher will decide which one they use. So anyway, when the book got published, I looked at the cover and I said, yes. <laughs> so now in 2013, the fire department, uh, Donnie Peterson and Bill Bennett were the historians at that time. They asked me if I would uh, do a history for the fire department. So we discussed doing a book. Now I have just done two books and I didn't think it was a good idea because it's locked in time. You can't expand it. Uh, you can't change it if you make a mistake. Uh, it just didn't lend itself. Plus there's links, you know, we have videos and things. So I convinced them that a web page would be best. So if you go to the fire department on the town website and look at fire department history, you get my, uh, my history page and there is 117 years of fire department history. All of, every single picture that they had in their collection, plus some pictures of a Model T, the RLC Perm, outfitted for fighting fire, forest uh, fires, as a forest fire warden, uh, which was actually the first motorized fire engine. Of course, they had hand pumpers back in the day, in the 1800s, and they had little uh, pump houses, they called them, with, with these hand pumpers. They actually have a picture of one at North Hamill. So anyway, uh, that took about six months. So I had a project in mind called uh, North and West Chelmsford. Um, then my wife got a hold of me after I finished the, uh, the fire department history, and she says, you've got to do a book on uh, York Beach. So uh, that's a historic hotel right here. There was an 1880 time frame. And the people that built that donated a place called Ellis Short Sands Park and across the street from this hotel. Uh, it was converted to condominiums in the 1980s. Anyway, did this book and uh, about a year and a half. And it's a good thing because two-thirds of the material 
came from a lady uh, in her 60s who, whose family was the second owner of the historic hotel, and she had ALS, as did Jane Drury, and she's gone a couple of years ago. So this book could not have been repeated if I hadn't done it for Carol. Now, in, uh, now after I finished that book, uh, this book is all mine. Okay, this is my passion. I went to Arcadia and said, I've got this book half done. Uh, sign me up. Uh, we're going to do North and West Chelmsford. So um, I signed up for 18 months to take the pressure off, finished it two months early. Uh, and it's a good thing I did that too because the source of many of the pictures also passed away, uh, the mill pictures. I never got uh, the actual pictures, but I worked with the owner who was in Tennessee. He emailed back and forth. I was so lucky because he, he was near death. He recovered long enough to uh, do his bucket list trip across the country and send me some fantastic pictures. Okay? Um, I was always fascinated by the mills. Who built them? What was in them? Okay, you, you can find out, you can see the steam engines, find out when they put electricity in. Uh, this, this was uh, uh, my passion, anyway. Okay, now we're 19, in uh, 2015. i got to get my century straight. And uh, they tore down the station at, at uh, 7 North Road. And have you ever seen such a blank slate as we had to work with? Okay, that is your classic blank slate. Okay, so I signed on to the 7 North Road Committee. Uh, with a nice bunch of guys that you see down here, Dave Antonelli and Paul McDougall and uh, Glenn. Glenn and uh, Brian Strip, and I recruited Brian Strip to be on the uh, historical commission with us. And uh, and this fellow right here, uh, Ed Atchison, his wife is actually in charge of the historic district, uh, but he was our chairman. So we had public hearings and. Uh, uh, we had, uh, oh, well, first we um, solicited ideas. So we had ideas from pave it over, make a parking lot for the uh, farmer's market. What a great idea. And uh, then at the other end of the uh, spectrum, we had uh, build a uh, public restroom and information center like they have in Concord. Okay, well, unfortunately, <laughs> get a good laugh out of that one. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, one of our requirements was, uh, how will it be funded? <laughs> Nobody had any ideas how to fund that project. So, uh, and, and the parking lot, parking lot wasn't very popular either. So we had 10 topics. We went through, we did a survey, and uh, we had a whole bunch of people rank. Uh, I forget, scale of 1 to 5, I think it was, for each of the 10 um, ideas. And uh, I scored them. And one that came out the highest was uh, uh, by the Chelmsford Garden Club, which is a long established, I think it's the oldest in town. It is. And uh, Judy would know, she's a member. Yeah. So uh, we uh, pitched that to the uh, Board of Selectmen, and it was accepted. And uh, they started uh, work uh, with the cooperation of the DPW to put in electricity and water. and. Uh, uh, volunteers, I can't even mention how many, uh, like Western Nurseries down the street, there were several different groups that uh, contributed to the, the effort, and uh, that resulted in the uh, Chelmsford Community Garden in... No. Uh, who, to, I'm sorry. That's, that's, uh, that's a different outfit. That's where you grow vegetables. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and the reason that Judith's complaining, I have to explain, she's the one that came up with that name. Hey! Thank you. So anyway, the Chelmsford Public Garden, as you see, is a, a very lovely place. And uh, if you notice, there's a stone over here on the side. Um, when uh, Brenda Lovering was in proposing uh, this, I said, would you like to have a historical marker, okay, being the historical person on the committee? And she said, gee, that sounds like a good idea. So uh, I had to, uh, Brenda had to beat on me for months and months and months while I had to beat on the LeMazery brothers to, uh, to get this uh, stone ready. Uh, they did a great job, by the way, and, um, to get it ready on schedule for, for Brenda. So uh, Carol and I, um, 
actually donated uh, this, this uh, historic plaque. Uh, the Lamentary brothers donated the stone. Uh, and uh, Donna Berger, we're all listed down here at the bottom, Donna Berger did the artwork and uh, she took out the tree that was in front of the school. The school was built in 1852, torn down in 1928. And you see, you can see it very plainly thanks to Donna's photo editing and get rid of that darn tree. And Carol accuses me of uh, putting my name on the stone down here uh, because I was jealous that her name is on the stone out there on my road. <laughs> Okay, this, uh, the town didn't have a uh, book scanner um, and nothing to do large format scan. So I, I located a company that, that does for libraries. Uh, it's fairly expensive. They do a large format book scanner. I went to uh, CPC, got pre-approval. I went to the Board of uh, Selectmen, stood up and made a pitch, and they voted uh, to accept the proposal, bought it. And so I started uh, realizing there was a lot of stuff that could be scanned. Uh, I started with some really old yearbooks, okay, and the bindings, you know, you can't uh, crack uh, bindings and old books and so on. So I started scanning some of these really old, back in the 1920s, yearbooks, and I posted on Facebook uh, that some of these were available. Well, that got some attention. And uh, the library says, well, you know, we're always answering requests for people to look at our uh, local history collection of yearbooks. Could you do some for us? So, so I ended up going back and forth to the library, carrying like 20 pounds of uh, yearbooks every time, and uh, scanning, and uh, then announced, okay, folks, I've got all the years up to 2000, okay. Then my friend Bob Pariso at the Townsford High School Alumni Association he contacts me and says, Fred, can you do all up to 2017? <laughs> well, it wasn't on my bucket list to spend over 100 hours scanning. So, uh, of course, no money here. This is all volunteer work. There was one Facebook post that made this whole thing worthwhile. So I'm going to share it with you here. And... Uh, I'm going to try to read it without getting choked up because it's hard. Tonight I found a yearbook from 1932 on the Chelmsford Historical Page and for the first time in my life saw a picture of my real biological grandfather. I'm a redhead with freckles and had a successful college athletic career. I'd always assumed that the red hair came from my grandmother's side of the family and the athletic talent from my parents. You can imagine how blown away I was to read my biological grandfather's yearbook right up and see that he was referred to as Wallace Scobie, red hair, freckles, a joyous smile, and a perfect athlete. <laughs> now, here's my friend Bernie Reddy that I've already picked on once. And uh, he's on Town Talk, which is a, a cable TV show uh, that Joe Reddy has taken over for his uh, late dad, uh, Dennis. And uh, Bernie has the stack of uh, history books that he mentioned earlier, the uh, 1600s Fisk and uh, 1800s Allen, uh, I'm sorry, 1700s Allen, 1800s Waters, and the uh, uh, the 1910 to 2010 Parker's Merriam book. So, right at this point in the uh, in his presentation, he's saying, "This stuff is forever." Okay. Well, that, I was watching the show, um, and uh, it hit me then. Uh, oh my goodness! Uh, this this work that I've done all is uh, is going to be around. Could be around centuries after I'm gone. Fred Marion. 